Father in heaven, be with us throughout this midday power surge is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this midday power surge, Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Safe to serve international, first time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. Are you familiar with the idiom, the dots are connected, the dots are connecting? It can be used as a metaphor to illustrate an ability to associate one idea with another, one person with another person to find the big picture or salient feature, imperative mass of data. The dots are connecting. Well, beloved, today I'm going to use witticism and address the spots are connected. The spots are connecting, not dots, but spots, S-P-O-T-S. Stay tuned. So friends, what's still trending on the media right now? Well, it's evident. The SCOTUS leaked opinion. And the media reports state that they are trying to identify the leaker. However, some people who have great clout are saying, we don't care about who the leaker was, who the leaker is. The protests have, have begun. Politico obtained an apparent draft of a... The protests have begun, brothers and sisters. And it seems to me the spring of 2022 was too quiet. Too quiet. As a result, they had to stir the pot. And friends, remember, when Babylon tells you to look left, you need to look right. All right, brothers and sisters. And the timing of this leak is very suspicious. All right, friends. Again, February 2022. Politico obtained an apparent draft of a Supreme Court opinion that is marked as a, quote, first draft and dated back in February. Mm -hmm. It was circulated in the court as a first draft by Justice Alito in February, dated February 10th. And remember, whenever they say, look over here, my friends, look there, but also look somewhere else. By the way, let me be clear. Don't look over there. The Bible tells us, watch carefully, my friends, that this is nothing but a crisis that has been predicted. In Matthew 24, please note this. When they say look left, you look right. In Matthew 24, the Bible tells us, watch carefully, my friends, in verse number 23, then, if any man shall say unto you, Look, here is Christ, or lo, over there is Christ, believe it not. And my parody, if they tell you, Look over here, don't look over there, look elsewhere. Verse 26 of Matthew 24, with the context, What shall be the sign of thy coming? I quote, verse 26, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, which means to look, he's in the desert. Jesus says, Go not forth. All right. When they say, Look over here, you look elsewhere. This is nothing but a distraction tactic. An intimidation tactic and also a distraction tactic here. I think that the only way the Democrats have a chance in November is if they rile everybody up, get people to the polls with these emotional, cultural issues. And as I said yesterday, not just a distraction, no, it's a diversionary tactic. And beloved, who brought the news? Watch how I'm going to segue now. Buckle your seatbelts. All right, please. Put on your thinking caps, as usual. Notice what this says, friends. Who broke the news regarding 
The SCOTUS leaked opinion. Politico. Politico. We have huge breaking news tonight, and I can't even believe I'm going to tell you what I'm about to tell you. But in a highly, indeed, as far as I can tell, utterly unprecedented leak from the Supreme Court, Politico has obtained what they say is... All right, but now Politico also broke another story. And I don't see any major protests. I don't see any protests. Look at the screen. Headline, DHS creating disinformation governance board. Who brought that news? Politico, April 26, 2022 and April 27th. Now watch. Then, Activist Post ran this article with the headline, Who are the people behind... The DHS's Disinformation Governance Board. Who are the people behind this, my friends? All right. An activist post listed the individuals. The author of this piece is viewing the people only from a political perspective. But by God's grace, we shall dig into their background and what they're presently doing, and see them from a religious perspective. Why? It's a spiritual war that we're living in based on scripture. Okay, in a recent midday power surge, I covered the Homeland Security Secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas. All right, and I share with you that the secretary is Jesuit educated. Jesuit trained. Now, my opening theme. Not just that the dots are connecting, but the spots are connecting. In Revelation chapter 13, the Bible says in verse number 2, speaking of the papacy, with this body of a leopard, the Bible tells us, the leopard represents Greece in one sense. Daniel 7, but that's not where I'm going. I simply want us to focus on what is significant about the leopard. The leopard has spots. And Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse number 23 says, Can the leopard change its spots? Cannot. Cannot. Popery will not change. All right, Jesuitism, its objective will not change. And the secretary, Mayor Cass, from DHS, is Jesuit educated, Jesuit trained. He attended Loyola Law School, Roman Catholic, Jesuit institution, Ignatius of, Lo of Loyola, Loyola, founder of the Jesuit order. And what has been... The objective of Jesuits to overthrow Protestantism, overthrow liberty of conscience. What did they establish in past time? The Inquisition Board. What is now happening in America? The setting up of a U.S. Jesuit Police Inquisition Board. It's still intact today. Notice. And what has been the aim of Jesuit popery? To overthrow liberty of conscience. To overthrow the principles of freedom enshrined in the U.S. Constitution. The principles enshrined regarding freedom in the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures. And we're told in Great Controversy, page 571, popery will not change. The papacy that Protestants are now so ready to honor is the same that ruled the world. In the days of the Reformation, when men of God stood up at the peril of their lives to expose her iniquity. Red words, second sentence, she is unchanged. The spots are connecting. The dots are connecting. Now, let's get back to the article at hand. Headline, the people behind this disinformation governance board. Now, 
the activist post article listed nina jankovic take a look at this she was educated at georgetown university beloved she is the point person of the government's dhs disinformation governance board and where was she educated where was she trained georgetown university at the walsh school of foreign service at georgetown university well let's take a look walsh school of foreign service at georgetown university let's take a look at some history here blue word it is considered to be one of the world's leading international affairs schools the school of foreign service was established by a jesuit edmund a walsh what was the goal listen the goal was preparing americans for various international professions to take over world affairs world affairs and it is known for the large number of graduates who end up working in u.s foreign policy foreign policy georgetown a jesuit institution controlling foreign policy u.s policy well what has been the objective the mode of operation the modus operandi of jesuit popery it's right there french red words on the line shaping the policy of nations climbing up to be counselors of kings prime ministers presidents princes you get the chancellors governors senators all right even also parliament judges scotus justices and what would be the end goal to overthrow protestantism and to revive popery in the various nations all right there it is georgetown and what said a former president this country america and this world benefit from your commitment to jesuit principles happy birthday georgetown the dots are connecting the spots are connecting and jesuits they champion education that's where they choose to begin the work to overtake nations through their educational policies and institutions all right back to the article activist post it listed three other individuals by the way there are many others in the article i'm just taking the first three why in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established first rebecca katz second shantayanan devaragin number three thomas Banchoff. all right let's begin with the first look at that friends a cursory search on google rebecca katz where is she presently what is she connected to presently georgetown university and look at the top the world economic forum the dots are connecting and these people who have been jesuit educated jesuit trained and still connected to jesuit institution is the ones policing Hmm? misinformation the ones behind the gov the u.s government board of disinformation to police disinformation number two shantyanan look at that georgetown university affiliation the spots are connecting the dots are connecting and look at the top again world economic forum i'll come back to that number three thomas bonchoff red box vice president of global engagement we're at georgetown university jesuit connected and again the world economic forum beloved are you seeing this get back here nina jankovic 
also spent time previously working with the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. Well, you know what I did, right? Yes. I dug into the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. Look at the screen right there, friends. Red box. It says it's a quasi-government entity and think tank that conducts research to do what now? To inform public policy. To inform public policy. Again, and what is one of the objectives, modus operandi of Jesuits? Climbing up to be counselors, to leaders of nations, to shape the policy of nations, to overthrow Protestantism. That's it, brothers and sisters. And what else? Notice. What else? To bring about the revival of Popery, the deadly wound being healed, fulfilling Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, verse 10, 11 through verse 17. Now, headline says, April 29, 2022, meet the new disinformation czar. What's her name? Nina Jankovic. Now, I don't know. She might be sincere, but presently, she is sincerely ignorant. She is deceived. All right. And on the other hand, she may very well be knowledgeable of what she is doing taking her marching orders oh somebody's going to say but she's a female don't fear females is that so what about jezebel in scripture all right athaliah in scripture come on herodias in scripture how many more characters in scripture who were women apostate woman abominable woman Church and state union. To persecute God's commandment keeping people do I need to name. Got that. Let me digress. Move on. There it is again, my friend. She is officially the executive director of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Disinformation Governance Board. Think about that. My friends, this is the nail in the coffin. Look at this right here. When interviewed by NPR about this book, Nina said, quote, And I shudder to think about if free speech absolutists were taking over more platforms, what that would look like for the marginalized communities all around the world. Nina Jankovic believes that free speech is not absolute. One more time. She believes free speech is not absolute. When have you ever heard that phrase before? When? And from whom? Look at this, my friends. From Pope Francis, who once stated and still believes that freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of the press is not absolute. All right. And if you speak against my mother, Roman Catholicism, the Pope said, you will receive persecutions punch, persecutions punch, papal, popraise, persecutions punch, freedom of speech has limits. Freedom of expression is not absolute. That's it, my friends. Thus, the dots have been connected. Do you see it now? Jesuit trained, Jesuit educated, they're all singing from the same hymn book. By the way, I'll come to singing shortly. And what does absolute mean? Fixed, rigid, established, set, Settled, irrevocable, unalterable. And what does Popery, Jesuitism, believe? The principles of freedom enshrined in the U.S. Constitution must be repudiated. In the Bible must be nullified, 
burnt. That's it. And what are we told? Pope Francis said recently, watch carefully, the right to private property is not absolute. There it is. There it is, friends. There it is. The dots are connecting and in some respect have been connected. All right. The spots are connecting. And what are we told in volume 5, page 451? The influence of this threefold union. What are they, pastor? I'll tell you right now. Popery, spiritualism, and apostate Protestant America. That's it. They shall repudiate every principle of our constitution as a Protestant and Republican government. And then they shall exalt popery and papal falsehoods and delusions. Then we may know that time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. The end is near. And that is the disinformation board czar who says that freedom of speech is not absolute. And that is one of the main persons to police misinformation Lord, have mercy upon us in America and then around the world. Wake up, my friends. By the way, no coincidence. Who else also believe that no amendment of the U.S. Constitution is absolute? Well, another person who claims to be a Roman Catholic, educated, trained, the present president. That's it. What a connection. The spots are connecting. Well, they're all singing from the same hymn sheet. But remember, who is the Pied Piper? The man over there at the Vatican. And his father is the devil himself. Listen now to Nina Jankovic's song regarding information laundering. Is really quite ferocious. Take a listen. And please don't laugh. This is not humor. I'm not here to give jokes. If you want jokes, you can go watch some stand-up comedian. This is a life and death matter. All right. And you saw what happened to somebody recently. All right. And another person recently, David Chappelle or whatever his name is. Listen to this. Laundering is really quite ferocious It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious By saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet show Disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious It's how you hide a little hide a little lie It's how you hide a little hide a little lie It's how you hide a little hide a little lie When Rudy Giuliani shared that intel from Ukraine Or when TikTok influencers say COVID can cause pain They're laundering disinfo and we really should take note And not support their lies with our wallet voice or vote Information laundering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or mainstream outlets. So this information's origin seems likely less atrocious. Laundering <laughs> is really laundering mm, 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 mm. is Fred, really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So this information's origins are like Congress or. By seeing them in Congress or on mainstream outlet. That's it. Don't you forget that. Don't, don't allow them to hide their atrocious. Yeah, let me use some witticism here. Their diabolical plans under the veneer of music and melody. By the way, that is grotesque to my ears. Let's move on from that. Let's get back now and show the spots are connecting. The dots are connecting. These people are connected to Jesuitism and the World Economic Forum. I covered these three earlier. Notice now, my friends, the World Economic Forum. What are they promoting? Have you forgotten Klaus Schwab? We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt 
to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. Listen, and remember what he said, my friends. All right? He stated at the World Economic Forum and the World New Order Governance Session. He said, many of us are pondering when things will return to normal. The short response is never. Now that was Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum. Beloved, this is Klaus Schwab's daughter. You heard me correctly. And she stated that she wants governments to use the Pestilence 19 policies. Yes, those same draconian policies to combat the climate change crisis. Listen to this, my friends, and weep. This crisis has shown us that, first of all, things can shift very rapidly. When That's Nicole Schwab. This crisis has shown us that, first of all, things can shift very rapidly when we put our minds to it and when we feel the immediate emergency to our livelihoods. And second, that um, clearly the system, I mean, you mentioned it earlier, that we had before is not sustainable. So I see it as a tremendous opportunity to really to have this great reset and to use this huge flows you know, of money to use the increased levers that policymakers have today in a way that was not possible before to create a change that is not incremental. Wait a minute. Did you just hear that? Implement the Great Reset, but do it not incrementally. Now, what does that mean? What is the opposite? You mean a rapid crisis to bring about the Great Reset? Just connect what Nicole Schwab just said with what her father, Klaus Schwab, said. And you will see the dots being connected, the spots being connected. Do we really understand what's coming upon this earth? Listen, continue. That we can look back and we can say this is the moment where we really started to position. That we can look back and we can say this is the moment where the levers that policymakers have today in a way that was not possible before to create a change that is not incremental. But that we can look back and we can say this is the moment where we really started to position you know, nature at the core of the economy. Taking the point of view of of business and the economy and looking at where are there opportunities to create jobs and regenerate nature. And there are plenty of opportunities. And this is, again, a mindset of actually innovation, technology, and, you know, uh, a business growth can happen with a positive impact of nature and kind of laying out some of these examples. And regenerative agriculture is, of course, a huge part of that as well. And one of the key um, reflection points here is also around engaging youth. And for me, it's again, I come back to this shift in mindset of the restoration generation. Can we conceive of ourselves as humans? I mean, you talked about a new humanity. I think you mentioned it, right? Can we conceive our, of ourselves as a restoration generation? I think that's where we need to go. I'm also hopeful that it's possible, but I think it will take a lot of um, will, both political will, but also in terms of the business actors to break with business as usual, but in a very serious way and to say we need to make very difficult choices. There are trade-offs, but this is our chance. And, other, and this is about risk and it's about resilience because the shocks are coming, are going to be even worse if we don't know, do it now. And while we are focusing on the spots being connected, my parody of the dots being connecting and connected, I want to say this, we need to examine ourselves. Are there spots in our lives? Jeremiah chapter 13, the Bible says in verse number 23, can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard change his spots. What's the context? Then may you also do good that are accustomed to do evil. It's time for self-examination. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, we see prophecy. 
about spots. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 14. The Bible says that thou keep God's commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ is Christ about to come. So what then is the instruction? Keep his commandment without spot. How am I? How should we respond to God right now? Lord, give us a desire. Give us the power to lovingly obey your commandments. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 13. The Bible says, Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's us. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of Jesus in peace without spot and blameless. That's an instruction. Lord, give us the will. Give us the power. Make us consistent Christians in these last days. Give us peace. We have been troubled on every side. Give us peace, dear God. We claim your peace today. First Peter chapter 1. And verse number 18. For as much as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb, a lamb without blemish and without spot. Two things I want to say here. It says lamb and without spot. Naturally, intrinsically, leopards have spots. And which power in the last days prophetically is likened unto that leopard beast, the papacy of Revelation 13 verse 2 and verse 3, all the way down to verse 10. And which nation, which power forms an image to popery, the leopard, is the lamb-like beast in verse 11 of Revelation 13. That lamb-like beast will have spots. That's what I'm saying. That's the nail in a sure place. The lamb-like beast will become spotted. My last point here. Praise God. We were redeemed by his precious blood. A lamb without blemish and without spot. Praise God. Redeem. The son that comes to my mind. Redeemed. How I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed. Redeemed. Sing it out, my friend. It's midday power surge. And song is a weapon we can always use against discouragement. Sing it out. Redeem. Redeem. How I love to proclaim it. And redeem means delivered. And before deliverance become a fruition, claim deliverance, claim redemption, claim victory from captivity, whatever it may be, marital, physical, financial, health related, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25, husbands love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he may present the church, you and I, to himself as a glorious church, not having spot, one more time, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that we should be holy and Without blemish. So what do we need? Love. Love, Lord. Increase my love for you. Increase our love for you, Lord. Increase our faith. Without spot. Look upon Jesus is the second song today. 
Thank you, Sister Henriquez. Look upon Jesus, sinless is he. Father, impute his life unto me. My life of scarlet. My life of spot. My life of scarlet. My sin and woe. But now covered with his life. Whiter than snow. The protest continues. Yes, friends, we must protest. Send in your prayer request. Look upon Jesus. Look upon Jesus, sinless is he. See 